Hello and welcome to the Blue Man Group with Jason Ewalls and Christopher Mitchell. Uh, yes, where inflation is high, gas prices, food, but the jokes are free. Uh, this is the administration update for June. Again, Jason Ewalls, the Assistant General Manager, and myself, Christopher Mitchell, the Executive General Manager, welcome you. If it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching, welcome. And our goal here is to give you some fabulous updates uh, of what is happening in your HOA at Sun Lakes. So first, I'm going to start off with a couple of questions I have received or calls from members about, I got this package in the mail. It's not from Amazon, it's not from FedEx, but it's from Sun Lakes. And what the heck is this? And so there are two things that you're going to have, you would have received in the mail. The first one is an updated delinquent assessment policy. And you're going to say, why am I getting this? I'm not late. I always pay my bills on time. And that's good and thank you. But we have to, by law, anytime there is a change to this collection policy, we must mail it to you first class. Now, one change that occurred that required us to update the collection policy was a new requirement by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau that must be that we must change our communication policy in the collection process. Collection process is a reminder when the assessment, your assessment payment is late, there's a late fee, uh, there's a process of an intent to lien and a lien. Well, this new requirement by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau actually requires HOAs in this collection of a debt, because when an assessment is passed due, it is considered a debt, that we must send a validation letter. The Cliff Notes version of this it extends the time that an HOA is required or extends the time from when I can place a lien on the property. So if you follow me, open your hymnal to page two, you'll see at the bottom some changes that are in the collection policy. It's about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth bullet down. When an assessment becomes more than 45 days past due, the association will send a validation notice to the billing address on record with the association. The owner will be charged a fee for the notice as well as all costs to complete the transmittal of the notice. And so what this is, is if your, your payment is 45 days late, this validation letter will be sent out to you saying, you owe this money, there's a fee that goes along with that letter, please pay. Then 80 days after the delinquent date, after you're, you're late, then you will get the intent to lien letter and then 110 days after that a lien would be filed on the property so it used to be 45 days was the intent to lien 90 days was the lien now we've had to extend it so that's what the big change is everything else is still the same but though that is a requirement that we had to update the collection policy um, again so that's number one number two then you're going to see rental or leasing of separate interests, accessory dwelling units. I'm not renting out my house. What do I need this for? This goes back to, you might remember for those board, mem board meeting watchers, uh, the election that occurred in 2021, that there was an item the law required the associations to allow ADUs, JADUs, and that's not a band name, Jason. The no, ADU is a, it's not a U2, it's not, Blink 182. No, an ADU is an accessory dwelling unit and a JADU is a junior accessory dwelling unit. And what the law said is that the association associations must allow these. These are your little casitas outside, not to be confused with El Encanto, which is casita. That's a no, sorry, sorry. Again, the jokes are free, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if I can laugh at it myself, that's fine. But these ADUs and JADUs are these mother-in-law units. They're required. California it required them. Some state senator in San Francisco felt that California had a shortage and we need to add these, uh, the avail availability of adding these to HOA properties. And so these ADUs and JADUs had to be written into the CCNRs. Also, they changed the law that they prohibited certain rental restrictions. 
So the key impact on Sun Lakes and why we had to send this to you. But first, let me go back. This was on the ballot in 2021. It passed with a 70.72% uh, 70 say that three times, approval. Our governing documents required a 75% uh, affirmative to have that CCNR amendment pass. Since it didn't breach that, and again, this is required by the Civil Code to make the changes to the governing documents, the board tasked legal counsel to then send it to uh, Superior Court to have this uh, approved and get a judge to approve, say, you got 70% affirmative, close to 75%, we're going to, uh, a judge would then make a, a ruling to allow it to be passed. And that was done. Uh, that was finalized, the court finalized their order. A court approved the reduction of the percentage of affirmative votes to amend the CCNR. The court finalized this order in August 6, 2021. So you're thinking, why am I just getting this now? It's 2022. Hold on. The final document had to be recorded with the County of Riverside Assessor's Office. Many of you out there, realtors, people that bought homes, probably know that County of Riverside's a little slow in processing their transactions. And so the County of Riverside was finally able to record it December 28th, 2021, and then mail us a final copy of that um, document that it was, again, recorded with the assessors. Then we could include it in this packet. So again, big change now. The ADUs, accessory dwelling unit, junior accessory dwelling unit, those can and are allowed in Sun Lakes per uh, civil code. Another change is what we had to go through, and if you go about uh, the fourth page in, you'll see the amendment at the bottom. And one of the biggest changes that occurred is we used to have a minimum year uh, rental or a lease that in order for you to rent your property, you had to enter into an annual lease. Civil code changed that. Uh, again, Sacramento working for you. It changed it to, so you, that's, you cannot do that. You cannot have greater than 30 days. And so we had to revise our CCNRs to state that 30 days, that, uh, an, that a lease, for example, a resident use and for term of not less than 30 consecutive days. So we had to amend our CCNRs to bring it from a limitation of one year down to 30 days and then add these ADUs and JADUs. That's the big change in the CCNR amendment. So again, you got a CCNR update, ADUs, JADUs, and uh, the 30-day uh, rental restriction. And then, of course, we have our updated delinquency policy. If you members have any questions, please go to the website. There's a wonderful button there that says uh, ask the, what is it, Jason? Ask, message to management. Message to management. I always say ask a manager. But message to management. Click that button, submit your question. We, Jason or I will answer that back. We have had, by the way, some members doing that. Uh, I really appreciate Jason's help. He's been responding very quickly to those so we can address your concerns. So Jason, what else do we got going on? I think we had some road work or something. We did, thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. We, uh, as you know, we've um, had some disruption of our roads over the past week or two. Um, what this is, is um, the five-year road plan that we have put in place. This was year one of this cycle. So um, we just, as of this airing, are finishing up the road work, except for one little piece. And what that is, is that part is from the the main gate from gate one to the clubhouse. Now that was originally scheduled uh, during the week of charity week, but with all the activities going on, we wanted to reschedule that since it did impact coming to the clubhouse. So with that, we are waiting on the date of reschedulement for that. And when that does take place, we will definitely get notification out to all of the residents. And uh, like I said, you know, that was it for this year, but again, we have four more years of this cycle here and um, they will be working on the next year. So That'll be we'll good. get that done and getting get the roads looking out. good. That's it, that's it. That's all we got for the road work, Chris. But uh, what about the pools? Well, what? you know, There's been it other is questions. summertime. Yeah. It is summertime. The pools uh, are nice and warm and uh, being used out there. Now, something that's really come up is, as you know, every year we've always had pool monitors out there. 
And it's gone from years past using mm -hmm. lifeguards, um, moving that from lifeguards to just pool monitors. We've used secure toss as monitors right. for the past couple of right. years. Uh, but we kind of made a change this year. And um, what it is is we will have an in-house person that will be a, a seasonal employee that will be here to sit at the pool Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they will also be on the holidays, the Monday of 4th of July and the Monday of Labor Day. So what that person will do on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that holiday Monday, is they will be out there from nine to three, just like we've always had in the past. And they'll be out there checking your IDs, make sure that you have your, yes. your Sun Lakes ID. So make sure you bring that with you to the pool, because they will need to check, make sure you're a resident, or that you have a resident with you if you're with a group. Also, what that person will be doing is if you plan on bringing an ice chest, you're more than welcome to. Just know that it will be checked just to make sure that there are no alcohol or glass bottles in that ice chest. Remember, the footprint of the pool is under our ABC yes. license, and we definitely do not want to risk losing that. Uh, so with that, this person will be checking. As far as the rest of the week, the Monday through Thursday, uh, our in-house facility monitors, as well as Secure Toss Patrol, will be doing hourly checks at the pool. But we do ask you as a resident, if you do see something, no need to confront the person, please call the front gate or call the front desk. We can get a monitor or a patrol over there to handle the situation. So again, we're kind of lightening it up a little bit. The North Pool will not have somebody directly at the pool, but we will have facility monitor and Secure Toss Patrol checking hourly. And once again, if there is any issues and there is not a monitor there or a patrol person there at that time, please call gate one or call the front recreation desk. And that's about it for the pools, Chris. Looking forward to a nice warm summer and uh, enjoying. The pool just got resurfaced, yes, it looks it nice. And so hopefully the residents enjoy it. That's it, it is getting a little warmer. So let's talk about food and the new menu that's coming up. Uh, Chef Chris and Thomas have been working on a new menu Originally, we had slated it to start uh, this month in June, mid-month, but we have pushed it back to July 1st. Now, you might ask, why, why are we doing this? I'm very excited. I've been waiting for it with bated breath to, to get some new food. But we needed to take a couple of steps to make sure that your experience when you came to the regist uh, register, to the restaurant, uh, was perfect. And so how does that start? Well, number one, it makes sure that the back of the house uh, cooks know the presentation, know what it's supposed to look like, the menu, um, I'm sorry, the recipes are known by the cooks. So in the past, you know, this is something we've done a long time ago. We'd take pictures of the plates and that would be a way as a guide to demonstrate to the line cooks, this is what the finished product is supposed to look like. Also using a consistent recipe so that if cook one comes in, cook two, they both make it the same way. And so Chef Chris is working on that and that's something we wanna make sure that the back of the house team is trained on it. But on the flip side though, we also wanna make sure that the front of the house, people know, that's your servers, your bartenders, what's the new menu? What new changes are there? So this is something also we're gonna take time and train them so they can better explain to you who's coming, the, the, the member who's coming to eat at the restaurant or the lounge or the veranda, what's, what changed on the menu and that the server would be able to assist you with that. We're also gonna let the servers, we've, there are four main plates that we've changed. There's some additional things, there's some the good old plates that have been there in the past, uh, but we also wanted the front of the house servers to sample uh, those f uh, four new plates to better explain again, the taste, the consistency, so that when you, the member, come in and ask a question of, hey, what, what is good, do you like this? The server can actually tell you, yes, it is good. No, I didn't like it. Again, the better experience for you, the member, coming to the restaurant. We also wanted to take time to get the books. Now, there's been, you know, supply chain issues. I know members, you're tired of hearing about that, but there are some issues with trying to get certain supplies, certain books, the menu books that we use. I know you've seen them, I've seen them. The current ones we have a little ratty or just, just falling apart. They don't look good. They don't look good for our restaurant. And so we are uh, in the process of acquiring some new ones. That's taking a little time because where a vendor readily had them available in a warehouse, they don't have them anymore because restaurants have reopened. A lot of people are doing new things with these menus, with other places with menus. They're using those supplies 
and there's a back order to try to get new product in. So I want to make sure we can get some in, or at least some temporary good looking books, not the old ones that we've had. And then finally making sure that the prices across all menus are the same. So a shrimp cocktail on the lounge menu is going to be the same on the dinner menu. There shouldn't be a, a price difference. Now there will be some changes. The lounge menu may have some smaller portions and different pricing, but it's to make sure that the pricing across all menus for the breakfast, lunch, dinner, lounge are similar. Also to make sure that the grammar, uh, punctuation, Tammy Morgan, that's a shout out to Tammy, who is our grammar and punctuation specialist, uh, that we review those menus so that they are 100% accurate. And so that's why we've moved it to July 1st, again, to make sure the product that we put out to the members is set to a high standard. Not just, I'm just getting it done quick, here you go, enjoy. We wanna make your experience an enjoyable one at the restaurant. And I think it starts with, how does the place look? How does the plate that you order look? How does the menu look? How was the customer service experience? These are all things that we're working on, Thomas and Chef Chris, and Jason and myself as well, to assist them uh, in the restaurant and the lounge. And so with that, look July 1st, new menu. Those will be posted uh, probably the last week of uh, June. They'll be posted online so you can uh, prepare yourselves, get ready and look forward to seeing you at the restaurant and the lounge and enjoying this new menu. Lastly, I know we're working on some new specials with Chef Chris, look forward to that. But we also have, besides Father's Day, what else do we have going on for the future? Well, continuing with the restaurant theme there, Chris, uh, 4th of July is coming up. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, Cara and Patricia Levy will be talking about uh, a lot of the events coming up um, uh, soon in this summer. Mm -hmm. um, but also what we want to talk about is 4th of July and the restaurant and the lunch that they're going to be serving. So you can purchase, and I say purchase because you're going to do pre-purchase and pre-ordering. We've, you know, learned from the uh, past when uh, we just have it open, you know, we want to make sure that we have the proper amount of food. We're not running out of food, not having to, you know, yes. put, put a pause ticketed on it until events. we can make some more. Yeah. So decided to switch to ticketed events. So what you can do is for $17, you can go to the hostess desk and you can purchase a ticket for a, a lunch at the um, 4th of July parade event. It'll start at 11 a.m. And what that ticket includes is it includes either a hamburger or an all-American chicken sandwich and a couple sides and I believe a drink as well, mm -hmm. like a water or a soda. Right. Um, so the very popular event I know in years past. I mean, we've had upward of a thousand people mm -hmm. at that event and you know, and sold a thousand meals. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to it. I know that a lot of the residents are. You know, last year we did have yes. a 4th of July, but we were still you know, kind of modified as far as what we can do. Uh, this year, I think we're gonna be full-fledged back to how we used to be and having a great day out on the veranda in the ballroom. That's where the lunch will take place. So if you want to get out of the heat, because we know it's gonna be warm, yes. there will be seating in the ballroom for you, as well as traditionally, we've always kept the restaurant closed and allow people to overflow into the restaurant and sit there as well if they'd like. Good deal. So again, looking forward to it, 4th of July. You can go ahead and purchase your tickets now. Just head on down to the hostess desk. I like that all-American chicken. That's right. Nice. Nice. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that, that concludes our update of the June happenings in administration. Again, take time if you have a question, concern, message to management on our website. Click that um, and that will send an email to Jason and myself so we can respond to you or any questions that you want addressed either on Coffee with the GM or in this administration update, please let us know. And with that, my fellow Blue Man Group, Jason Ewalls, my fellow Blue Man Group member, Jason Ewalls, myself, Christopher Mitchell, have a wonderful day. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Take care.